Welcome to the BYU Jerusalem Center. We're delighted to be playing for you tonight in this beautiful hall, although with an empty hall, but I'm sure you'll be enjoying this concert in front of your home screens just as much. 1842 was Schumann's chamber music year. After writing over 120 songs, mainly love songs to his young wife, Clara Vick, and many piano works and two symphonies celebrating his marriage to Clara, Schumann dedicated 1842 to almost only chamber music. Writing three wonderful string quartets, a piano trio, a piano quintet, and a piano quartet, which we will be playing here tonight. The quintet and piano quartet were written simultaneously. Both pieces were written in the same key of E flat major. Such feverish concentration on a single genre at a time can be seen as a typical manic behavior. This is the time Schumann started having mental health problems. One would call today bipolar disease. Going from manic highs to the other side of the cone, coin, phobias and terrifying slides into depression. These changes in mood can be heard in the music with multiple slides of his own personality. The work consists of four movements. The first movement in the traditional sonata form, opening with a short, slow introduction, which appears twice in the movement and contains four note motif, which might remind us of Beethoven. Schumann was devoted and inspired by Beethoven. The second movement, a scherzo, features a quick staccato figure that moves around a G minor scale and rushing fantasy imagery in interrupted by two contrasting trios. The third movement, Andante Cantabile, offers one of Schumann's most romantic and beautiful melodies with his beloved Clara in mind, played by the cello and later the violin and the viola. The final treats in main its main theme as a fugue and bringing the movement to an end combining ingeniously the three thematic ideas. The piece was dedicated to a cellist friend of the Schumann's, but it was written with Clara in mind, who would be the pianist at its premiere in Leipzig two years later. Clara described the piece as a beautiful work, so youthful and fresh as if it were his first. Enjoy.
The Czech composer, Fibich, was a commentary of, uh, contemporary of Smetana and Dvořák, and like them, was a prominent composer in Prague at the end of the 19th century. Unlike Smetana and Dvořák, who gave themselves over entirely to national cause, consciously writing Czech music, with which the emerging nation, nation strong, strongly identified, Fibich's potion was more ambivalent. This is due to his family background, being a product of both German and Czech cultures. He was influenced in both language, languages and studied as a teenager in Vienna and then at the Leipzig Conservatory. His music is influenced by the German romantics Weber, Mendelssohn, Schumann, and Wagner. But it is very clear that he was also influenced by his Czech contemporaries, as one can hear in the piece we are about to hear. Fiebig's musical interest was mainly in dramatic and orchestral works, composing eight operas, three symphonies, and nearly 400 piano pieces. He also wrote a dozen chamber works, largely neglected in his lifetime, many of them unpublished. It's only recently that musicians started to return to these half-forgotten pieces. This quintet for violin, clarinet, horn, cello, and piano, composed in 1893, is one of them. Because of its unusual instrumentation, musicians rediscovered this piece in the 1980s and were won over by its stunning tonal effects. The first movement, in a traditional sonata form, the movement having many contrasting tone colors made possible by these five instruments. The Largo is the heart of the work, one of the most richly romantic slow movements in the Czech chamber repertoire. As in Schumann's piano quartet, this piece has two contrasting trios in the scherzo, with the main section to be played, according to the composer, with wild humor. The fourth movement, Allegro con spirito, is joyous with energetic passages and lyrical episodes alternating. The music eventually concludes with a hymn-like treatment of the movement's main theme.
We'd like to thank the BYU Jerusalem Center for inviting us to play in this live broadcast um, rendezvous of top musicians from Israeli orchestras, Saida Balle, violin from the Israel Philharmonic, myself, Shuli Waterman from the Israel Chamber Orchestra, Gal Niska, cello from the Israel Philharmonic, Ron Zelka, clarinet, principal, Israel Philharmonic, Alon Reuven, Horn Principal, the Israel Kamerata, Jerusalem, and Ishai Shail with his own orchestra, the piano.